My name is David Berman. I'm from Queen Mary, University of London. You work on generalizing ideas of geometry to describe string theory. Yeah. So first of all, what do you mean by geometry and how does it normally appear in physics? So the first place that geometry really appears in physics is in the work of Einstein. So the first step that Einstein made was to combine space and time into one thing and then realize that that thing was a four-dimensional geometry combining space and time. Then he went one step further. He then thought, instead of having just ordinary flat space for space-time, you could have a curved space. So now I need to tell you what I mean by a curved space. So first, let's talk about geometry and the geometry of flat spaces. That's the geometry of Euclid. That's the geometry where we have parallel lines that never diverge or converge, where the angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees. All of these sorts of things, the things that we're taught in school. Now, we can ask ourselves the question, how do those geometric properties change if we're on a curved surface? Supposing we're on the surface of the Earth. Well, amazingly, the angles of a triangle don't add up to 180 degrees anymore. You can try this. There are many other geometric properties. Parallel lines will converge and other things will happen like this. Now, <clears throat> that was the idea of generalizing a notion of geometry to a curved space. That was done by Riemann and then Einstein took those ideas and he realized he could use it to explain gravity. So maybe you can ask what's the connection between gravity and the curvature of space? So the first thing is What's a line in a curved space? Well, a line's the shortest distance between two points. We all know that. When you fly from London to New York, your trajectory isn't straight as we would see it ordinarily, but it curves along the surface of the Earth in a particular way so that it's the shortest distance. Now, that differs than if you just take a map and draw a line on a flat surface. So then Einstein thought, Maybe there is no force of gravity at all. Maybe it's just that space is curved and that particles follow the shortest distance. And then you test that idea. You look at the consequences of the mass of curved spaces and you find that those curved lines exactly reproduce the theory of gravity. And what is string theory? So string theory is an idea where we challenge what the fundamental building blocks of nature are. There was the old idea that there'll be points, that we make up things with indivisible building blocks that are point-like. Now, if you think back, this is something that we almost always take for granted when we think of an atom. When we see how an atom is depicted or a fundamental particle, there are always these point-like objects, these small, tiny spheres that we can't break apart at the base of everything. String theory said, let's imagine something different, that the basic building blocks are not points, but extended lines joined up into small loops, and these are what we call strings. So then, the basic building blocks are no longer points, but these loops of string. Then, people looked at the consequences of that idea and came up with an amazing observation. A piece of string can do something a point can't do, it can vibrate. And so we can get a whole spectrum of different particles, things that look completely different from a single piece of string vibrating. It's just like listening to a guitar string being plucked. It can make a whole host of notes, octaves higher and higher, but it's still that one piece of string. So people had the idea, maybe we don't need this whole zoo of particles, but just a single bit of string vibrating differently. That's string theory. And why should geometry change for the string? So, <clears throat> when we go back to its foundations, geometry is a theory of points and lines. That's how it started with Euclid. When we describe a triangle, we describe the vertices as having points, we put lines in between them, and then we construct everything from that. Now, imagine there are no points. What does that mean for geometry? Given the fact with string theory we're describing everything by these loops of finite size, there are no points anymore. We're used to that idea actually more than you think when we think of a computer screen with pixels. The pixels give us the shortest distance. 
we can't zoom in ad infinitum to the point. And so what we want to do is construct a geometry, no longer of points, but where is a finite distance scale, the length of the string, and see what that means and the consequences for geometry as a whole. So what kind of consequences does this generalized geometry have? So, one of the first things to say is that string theory made quite remarkable predictions. And one of them was that space and time can curve, just as Einstein said, but it can curve so much it comes back on itself into closed circles. This is an old idea, actually, of Kaluza and Klein, way back into the 1920s, that maybe there could be more dimensions to space and time, but those dimensions would curve so much they would come back on themselves. String theory saw that that idea was needed again, as it predicted that we needed new dimensions, but these dimensions weren't observed. They were hidden, and the only way they could be hidden was using the old idea of Kaluza and Klein, that there were these circles of extra dimensions in space. Now, that's the space. But how does the string see that space with this new generalized geometry? And this is the remarkable thing. Not only can a string vibrate, but a string can wind and wrap around circles. A point can't wrap something. But just think of an elastic band wrapped around a bottle. It can wrap. So now the geometry must take into account not only the position of something, but how it can wrap and wind around space itself. And that's one of the great new discoveries and the importance of generalized geometry.